Hey everyone, Dr. Franke here with a really exciting unboxing video for you on a brand new zero tolerance knife, the 0470. This is a very exciting release for a number of reasons. Number one, it is a collaborative effort with Belarusian designer Dmitry Sinkevich. Dmitry Sinkevich uh, is a designer uh, and knife maker who has had a series of successful collaborative efforts with Zero Tolerance, namely the 0450 series, the 0460 series, uh, as well as a few others. Uh, the 0470 is now a new evolution of his design language. Uh, and it's a, the number two reason that I think it's very special is that this is a continuation of a model that the Kershaw line makes. Now, Kai USA or Kai, K-A-I, as you can see denoted there, Kai USA, has the Kershaw brand, has the ZT brand. It also has uh, the Shun series of kitchen cutlery as well as the, uh, oh man, uh, that name is escaping me, the uh, Rockstead knives. They're, so all of those knife companies fall under the Kai moniker. Uh, and this is an, ev uh, an evolution of the Atmos model, a model created by Kershaw. Uh, it's a relatively straightforward EDC type of knife with a very similar overall profile, but it comes in with a bit of a smaller blade. So this is bigger, better, badder, and very much a ZT for very many reasons. So this has been exciting to a lot of people because the Atmos was essentially an ideal EDC knife and came in the sub $50 range with some low end materials. This one is coming in with titanium, marbled carbon fiber, special hardware, and 20 CV blade steel. So very exciting to see the ZT adaptation of this. So it comes in the standard ZT box uh, with the standard labeling and everything. You know what to expect in here. There's really not nothing special, just a little bubble wrap and a card that says, thank you for buying a ZT. So. Let's go ahead and get some vital signs on the 0470. What I really like is the fact that it's smaller in size. This along with the 0609 were two releases in 2018 that I think show ZT going very much towards the EDC market. This one is coming in with a three and a half inch blade, about 3.8 inches back to the pivot. You're looking at about 7.9 inches of overall length right here. The handle is coming in right at about 4.4 inches with an effective grip area of about 3.8 inches right there. Something that I very much like is that the blade stock is actually rather thin uh, compared to most other ZTs. This is coming in at 120 thousandths rather than the typical 157. And the handle stock is coming in, the handle width is 0.48, so under half an inch in overall width. That is a very nice size uh, right there. Uh, ideal for EDC. I love a three and a half inch blade and it fits very compactly into this handle. There's a lot of internal milling so it keeps this knife at 3.31 ounces so it certainly beats that one to one ounces per blade inch ratio that I like to see so very very nice there on the weight and the size. Another reason that I was very excited about this. Uh, let's go ahead and bring out another couple of common knives for a size comparison so you can see where this knife sits. Here's a Spyderco Para 3 and a Paramilitary 2. Uh, I don't unfortunately have any other ZTs to compare it to right now, but you can see that the 0470 slots in between both of these knives. It has considerably more cutting length than a Paramilitary 2 with a handle that's even smaller than a Para 3. So it's this amazing combination of a huge blade and a small handle, a very compelling uh, fact right there. Also, we should note that this knife came in around $240. Uh, the price point is very compelling for these different materials. So let's find out what those materials are by breaking this knife down anatomically. Up front, as you can see, uh, probably from before, that this is in CPM 20 CV, which is an excellent blade steel, uh, chemically equivalent to M390 and CTS 204P. Uh, very high in chromium, uh, very high in carbon, very high in uh, tungsten, I believe, or vanadium. I got to look at that. Anyways, it takes up, uh, it takes a very keen edge. It becomes very hard and it is very tough steel and very corrosion resistance. Basically, one of the ideal blade steels right now, and it's made in the USA, so that's very cool. They've done it, uh, they finished it in this machine belt satin, which is their common satin finish, something I absolutely adore. It's got a very nice top swedge to it. It's got a very classic. Uh, Sinkovich style tip. He does this thing on his tips and you may have seen it on the Sigma, you may have seen it on a few others, 
where the tip almost recurves out uh, towards the top there, uh, where it's not uh, your standard tip. It makes for a very pokey type of a knife. And with the top swedge like this and the full thickness out there, it is a reinforced tip, and so you can feel confident stabbing into things. The edge bevels came very even and the knife came very sharp as is usual from Zero Tolerance. I've not done any extensive testing so I can't tell you about the heat treat. We'll find that out in a final diagnosis later on down the line. There is some jimping up top here. Uh, it's not particularly sharp but you do get a small amount of traction. It's quite pleasant. It looks quite nice. Uh, your your uh, index finger does grip onto it. If you hold it in this way you can get out there on the front of the knife. The sharpening choil is done uh, okay. It's really not ideal. It really needs to be more of a circular cutout right here so that the actual end of the blade uh, is sharpened. There's a bit of a smile, but that is not a deal breaker for me. It's just something, uh, it's one of those fit and finish type of issues that eventually will go away. Moving back to the pivot, you can see that it has this special hardware. Uh, of all of the Sinkovich hardware, I think I like this one the most. Uh, it's sort of the most restrained. If you remember the 0456 from ZT, this knife, this hardware kind of reminds me of that, except that was done in blue. I didn't really like that. This is much more subtle. Reminds me a bit of the biohazard symbol or the radioactive symbol, I suppose, is, is more accurate. And I kind of like that. It also streams well into the handle inlay, which you can see is this beautiful marbled carbon fiber, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, you can see on the back side, this is a T8 screw right here, and it is keyed so it does stay in place. When you are disassembling the knife, it makes it very easy to assemble and reassemble this knife. It runs on steel ball bearings housed in steel washers, uh, and it is very smooth. On the inside, I have disassembled this knife. The bearings run against steel uh, race bearings and uh, race uh, washers so that uh, the bearings are not running against titanium. I do like that very much. Moving back to the handles here, this is one of the most impressive parts of the knife. Uh, we mentioned before this beautiful marbled carbon fiber that they've done here, beautiful chatoyance, beautiful reflectivity, very, very tastefully done, and it fits very, very well. This is a loose inlay, so when you remove this screw and this screw, it actually comes out. It's got a ring of carbon fiber underneath this pivot, so that's what secures it in place. It does not move when everything is tightened down. The gaps are very minimal. Uh, you cannot see a gap going on there. The backspacer is done in black aluminum. Uh, and so it saves some weight. This is going to be an area of contention. I think a lot of people will have wanted this to be in either titanium or carbon fiber, but realize that would have increased the cost significantly. I think that it's tastefully done. It looks good. Uh, it fits with the overall theme of the knife. This is one instance where I am not upset that this is aluminum. It doesn't bother me in any way because it's structurally very strong and it, uh, it stays in line with a user finish. It has an integrated lanyard hole on the inside right there. I'll say that's tastefully done as well. I like that very much. The backside is a bit plain. I've heard a couple of people complaining already that they're unhappy with how plain this is. Now, I am a huge fan of this, to be perfectly honest, because it shows restraint. This side is the pretty side. This side is the business side. Business in the front, party in the back. They can call this the ZT mullet right here. So what I really like is that this is totally flat. This allows this to have easy egress, ingress and egress from the pocket. It's very, very smooth. Now, speaking of the pocket, the clip is something of an unusual thing. What you're gonna notice is that it looks almost upside down, and in fact, it is. If you take that clip and you put it on the other side, it actually looks normal. And so uh, it's sort of an interesting thing that it's kind of upside down like that uh, on this side, but it does suit uh, left-handed individuals. If you're into that kind of a thing, I'm right-handed, so it's gonna stay there. I may end up putting a deep carry clip on this because it does ride a little bit out of the pocket, although this is not really a deal breaker. It's just enough to grab hold of those screws and pull it out very nicely. So, uh, what are my initial impressions? Well, this thing is very well made. I think that the action is very nice. The detent is a little bit on the lighter side, and so it is easy to not fully, dis not fully engage the knife. The ergos are excellent. It fits in my large to extra large hand very, very well. The blade length is ideal at three and a half inches. It's ground very well for cutting. It's very lightweight. I did not show you guys the extensive internal milling going on in there. 
Uh, maybe I'll do a disassembly video to show that. But initial impressions are very strong on this knife. I think this may be the best overall ZT from 2018, besting even the 0609. Let me know what you guys think of this knife down in the comments below. Go ahead and click like and subscribe. Follow me over on Instagram as Dr. Frunky. And as always, guys, take care.